Senate Judiciary Committee will come to order. We have 13 items on the agenda, 11 nominations and <clears throat> two bills. The six judicial nominees have been listed for the first time and will be held over. Judge Holly Thomas nominated to the Ninth Circuit. Judge Kit Demke nominated to the Eastern District of Washington. Judge Mame Frimpong nominated to the Central District of California. Charlotte Sweeney nominated to the District of Colorado. Judge Jennifer Thurston nominated to the Eastern District of California, and Judge Hernan Vera nominated to the Central District of California. I look forward to saying more about these nominees at our next markup. We likewise have one bill that has been listed for the first time and will be held over. S-2629, the Better Cybercrime Metrics Act, introduced by Senator Schatz, co-sponsored by Senator Tillis, Cornyn, Blumenthal, and myself. We also have five U.S. Attorney nominees receiving a vote today. They are Claire Connors for the District of Hawaii, Zachary Cunha for the District of Rhode Island, Nicholas Carest for the District of Vermont, Cole Finnegan for the District of Colorado, and Kenneth Parker for the Southern District of Ohio. In a moment, I'll invite my colleagues from Hawaii, Rhode Island, and Vermont to say a few words about their nominees if they wish. Uh, and I will enter into the record without objection a statement from Senator Michael Bennett in support of Cole Finnegan as the Colorado U.S. Attorney nominee. We also have a bipartisan bill on our agenda that is ready for a vote today. S-2342, the Ending Forced Arbitration of Sexual Assault and Sexual Harassment Act of 2021. Sponsored by Senators Gillibrand and Graham, co-sponsored by myself, Senator Blackburn, White House, and Blumenthal. This Mr. Bill, Chairman, could we yeah. add Senator Kennedy to that bill, please? Without objection, Senator Kennedy will be added to the bill. And I'm going to call on you, Senator Graham, in a moment to uh, explain uh, the bill to the okay, uh, to. committee. The bill provides, generally, uh, in general description, provides the victims of sexual assault or harassment an election to bring the case in court instead of being forced into secret, unfair arbitration. This is a critically important bill, and I commend my colleagues for their great work on this. Uh, after we've considered today's nominees, I'll speak more about this bill, and now let me turn to my friend and colleague, Senator Grassley. Thank you, Senator Durbin. Uh, on our side, we'd like the judicial nominees and S-2629 held over since they're on the agenda for the first time. And... Uh, in regard to S-2342 on the agenda, I'd like to say in a very general way and then specifics about that bill, one of my top priorities is to protect victims of sexual assault and harass har harassment. I was a supporter of the original VAWA legislation 1994, and it's been reauthorized several times, and I support the reauthorization. This year, I co-sponsored a legislative fix which ensures that the Crime Victims Fund will receive over $1 billion in additional deposits every year. I've worked on bills to enhance the right of survivors in the criminal justice system. In 2018, I led the co committee oversight of the FBI investigation of Larry Nasser. I worked with Senator Feinstein on legislation to improve a mandatory reporting requirement on coaches and instructors who witness abuse of young athletes. I've been a consistent advocate for victims to have their day in court. So this bill, 2342, addresses an important issue, preventing employers from sweeping sexual assault or sexual harassment claims under the rug of uh, enforcing mandatory arbitration ar agreements. I'm voting for this bill. All victims of sexual assault or sexual harassment deserve to have their voices heard and to have the option to go to court if they choose to go to court. Mandatory arbitration shouldn't be enforceable in these cases, under the bill, individuals who want to arbitrate their claims will still be able to do so. The bill, as originally drafted, including, included an exemption for union negotiated employment agreements. In other words, if you're a union member, 
and you're sexually assaulted, your right to go to court may be negotiated away by the union. I'm pleased that the bill's sponsors listened to our concerns about how the exemption weakened the legislation. The manager's amendment strikes that provision. Now, 2342 applies to all victims of sexual assault and harassment, and I'd like to thank Chairman and uh, Chairman Durbin and Senator Graham for their efforts on this bill. I'm voting for 2342 to support the victims of sexual assault and sexual harassment. They should have a choice of either court or arbitration. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Grassley. First, we turn to the U.S. attorneys, uh, and I understand we can proceed with an on block voice vote on the five U.S. attorney nominees receiving a vote today. Before we do, does anyone seek recognition to speak on behalf of Mr. Chairman? Senator Hirono? I'd like to very briefly express my support for Claire Connors, who has been nominated for the U.S. attorney position for the state of Hawaii. Claire has a, a, a lot of experience, both in, in the private sector, uh, with a law, very well-regarded law firm. She was also a former uh, U.S. attorney. She is the current attorney general of the state of Hawaii, so obviously she comes exceptionally well qualified for this position. It is unfortunate that her confirmation or her, the vote in this committee was delayed, albeit for one week, but every day that goes by and we don't have a U.S. attorney sitting there uh, is a day that I think um, <laughs> that should not be happening. So I urge my colleagues to support her nomination. Thanks, Senator Hirono. Any other senators seek recognition? Senator Whitehouse. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Zach Cunha is going to be a very good U.S. attorney for Rhode Island. Jack Reed and I have a <clears throat> pretty solid process of review for U.S. attorneys. I was the U.S. attorney, so I try to pay a lot of attention to this. Um, the U.S. attorney's office works very closely with the attorney general's office in Rhode Island. The attorney general's office in Rhode Island is one of three in the country that has full criminal jurisdiction. We don't have DAs. We got the whole package. So the relationship between the AG's office and the U.S. Attorney's office is a really important one. And in fact, <clears throat> the last U.S. Attorney appointed under uh, President Obama is now our Attorney General. So they're really quite, quite linked. So <clears throat> Jack and I have done a lot of due diligence with the federal court, <clears throat> with the U.S. Attorney's office, with the Attorney General's office, and in the legal community to find uh, the best possible candidate Zach is in the office right now, extremely well regarded by his peers, extremely well regarded by the court, extremely well regarded by the Attorney General's office, and I think he's going to be very effective at that uh, particularly important role of a U.S. attorney, which is to help coordinate and lead concerted law enforcement response. So without reservation, and on behalf of Senator Reid and myself, I uh, hope we can get a solid vote for Zach Cunha, a good guy. Thank you, Senator Whitehouse. Any further uh, comment on the U.S. attorneys? Senator uh, Leahy? Uh, thank you, Chair. I, I really appreciate the fact that you listed uh, Nicholas Karst, our nominee for U.S. attorney for Vermont. Uh, like Senator Whitehouse, I, I was a prosecutor, and I pay a great deal of attention and have over the years to who our U.S. attorneys might be, and uh, people I've recommended both during Republican and Democratic administrations. This one's a well-respected criminal prosecutor in the U.S. Attorney's Office in Burlington, Vermont now. He previously served as chief of the Civil Division. He refocused the office from a defensive litigation shop to an aggressive, proactive practice uh, focused on enforcing civil rights cases. He has a passion for the state of Vermont, for the mission of a prosecutor. Uh, I put my full statement in the record, uh, same time, Mr. Chair, but uh, he, is, uh, he is a prosecutor's prosecutor. And I think in our state, he's gonna be a superb addition following uh, an excellent a U.S. attorney who recently left, uh, and she's gone and joined one of our prestigious law firms. So thank you very much. 
If no one else seeks recognition at this point, on favorably reporting no the nominations of Claire Connor, Zachary Cunha, Nicholas Carest, Cole Finnegan, and Kenneth L. Parker to be U.S. Attorney, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Majority of the members present having voted in the affirmative, the ayes have it. The nominations will be favorably reported to the Mi floor. Mr. Chairman. Senator Hawley. I'd like to be recorded as a no on the nominees, if I could. All five? Yes, sir. Senator Hawley will so Thank you. Uh, be so recorded. Senator Blackburn? It's a no. Senator Blackburn will be recorded no on all five nominees. Senator Lee? Sorry, which one? Senator Lee will be recorded as no on Claire Connors. Any others seek recognition? We now consider S-2342, the Ending Forced Arbitration for Sexual Assault and Sexual Harassment Act of 2021, introduced in the Senate by Senator Gillibrand and Graham, co-sponsored by myself, Senator Blackburn, White House, and Blumenthal. If you wonder why we need this bill, let me tell you a story. It's the story of Lily Silbert of California. She had a monthly membership at a store called Massage Envy. She was sexually assaulted by a massage therapist. Afterwards, she tried to cancel her membership. She downloaded the store's app to her iPhone to cancel it, and she had to agree to terms and conditions in order to use the app. It never occurred to her that buried in the fine print of those terms and conditions was a forced arbitration clause. When she tried to file a lawsuit against the company over the assault, they forced her into a secret arbitration proceeding rather than let her have her day in court. Then there is the sad story of Sister Irene Morissette, an 87-year-old Catholic nun who resided in an assisted living facility in Alabama. She reported that she had been raped in her room. This was corroborated by evidence at the scene, though police couldn't determine who the perpetrator was. Sister Morissette's family tried to file a civil lawsuit against the facility for negligence. They couldn't do it. Three years earlier, Sister Morissette had signed an admissions contract with the facility, which had a clause that forced any future dispute into arbitration. So Sister Morissette ended up having an arbitration proceeding, 87-year-old nun. It was short, full of hearsay that wouldn't be admissible in a courtroom. It ended with the arbitrator finding that Sister Morissette did not seem upset enough in her police statement for him to believe she had been raped. The arbitrator wrote, and I quote, I did not hear the emotion from Ms. Morissette in this audio recording that I would expect to hear from someone describing being sexually assaulted. The arbitrator ruled against Sister Morissette, and the Morissette family was actually charged $3,000 to cover the cost of renting the hotel room where the arbitration occurred. Or consider the case of Gretchen Carlson, who is with us today journalist and Fox News anchor. She brought a sexual harassment case against her uh, superior, Roger Ailes, who invoked the forced arbitration clause in her employment agreement. Forced arbitration clauses require disputes to be resolved in secret proceedings where the deck is often stacked in favor of corporations and repeat players. For Americans who have been sexually assaulted or harassed, forced arbitration clauses not only deny survivors a day in court, they require the misconduct to be concealed from public view, and that allows abusers to commit even more abuse. The bill before us today would give survivors of sexual assault and harassment a, cho choice, a choice to go to court instead of being forced into arbitration by the fine print of a contract signed before the dispute arose. Concerns about this issue have been growing for years. In 2018, 50 state attorneys general wrote to Congress and said Congress today has the opportunity and the cause to champion the rights of victims of sexual harassment in the workplace by enacting legislation to free them from the injustice of forced arbitration and secrecy. This bill has the support of organizations including the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence, RAIN, the National Center on Domestic Violence and Sexual Violence, the National Domestic Violence Hotline, the National Partnership for Women and Families, the National Alliance to End Sexual Violence, Reliance, and many, many more. Uh, I think the survivors like Lily, Silbert, Sister Morissette, and Gretchen Carlson deserve the chance to make their case in court. And those who enabled their abuse should not be able to hide behind a wall of secrecy. 
Before turning to Senator Graham, I want to make two comments. First, uh, I want to acknowledge this bill was uh, uh, passed in the House of Representatives uh, and sponsored by a member of the Illinois delegation, uh, Sherry Bustos. Uh, she is so proud of this effort, and I'm glad that we're taking it up today, and I certainly thank Senator Graham for that. And then let me say on a personal note, uh, let me thank my staffers, Shona Winters and Dan Swanson, for the exceptional work that they've done. Senator Graham, speak at this point and offer your manager substitute. Uh, yes, I would, uh, I would offer the manager substitute. and really don't have a whole lot to add. You did a great job. So here's what I'm trying to... <clears throat> sort of say to society at large, an allegation has to be proven, right? To be accused of something is one thing. To be found responsible for that, that accusation requires a venue that's fair and open. I have no problem with arbitration. I think arbitration has its place. I think it saves money. I think it saves a lot of heartache. But we have a law on the books uh, that's pretty one-sided, that if you go in and seek a massage or you admit somebody to a nursing home or you work at a, a company, a condition of employment can be that if you make an accusation, it goes into an arbitration venue and you can't really speak much about it because you're silenced. So what we're trying to do is say when it comes to sexual assault uh, and sexual harassment, that you cannot be sign your rights away just by working somewhere or receiving a service that the courtroom will be made available to you. You still have to prove in a civil setting, a preponderance of the evidence, that it actually happened and the person's responsible. And I think that's the way this should be done because the arbitration system has shut a lot of people out and silenced their voices. Again, you can be accused of something you didn't do. That's a reality. But the greater reality here is that people are signing their rights away without really any understanding of what they're doing. And too many of these cases never see the light of day. Uh, Ms. Carlson, thank you. You brought this to our office a couple of years ago. Uh, Kristen's been great to work with. Senator Grassley, thank you for getting on board. It was really, really mattered. Senator Blackburn, uh, she was instrumental in getting some momentum on our side. We're gonna have a voice vote today. I think there's some things we can do to change the bill to make it even yet better. It has been a long time coming, and we are now here. We're going to vote this bill out today, and hopefully we'll get it on the floor of the Senate, and America will be a better place if this bill passes. Those who have been abused will have a form to make their accusations that are better due process, and most importantly, their voice will not be silenced. Mr. President, could you add me as a co-sponsor? Let's do this first. Let's, let's do the co-sponsors, adopt the manager's amendment, and see if anyone wants to speak to the merits of the bill. I want to thank Please. Senator Kennedy, who helped me draft this. So thank thank you. you. Senator Lay? Chair, I uh, ask consent uh, to be listed as a co-sponsor. Without objection. Mr. President, I'd like Senator to... Senator Coons and Senator Blumenthal, Senator Booker, Padilla, and Ossoff have asked consent to be added as co-sponsors, and they will be added. Uh, now let's adopt, um, Senator Hawley, would you like to be added as co-sponsor? Oh, yeah. Without objection? Oh, yeah. And let's adopt the manager's amendment to see if there's any comment on the substance of the bill as, as uh, amended. Is that all right? Yeah. Uh, is there, without objection, those in favor of the manager's amendment will say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Depending on the chair, the ayes have it. The manager's amendment's agreed to. I have two senators seeking recognition, White House and Blumenthal, to speak to the bill, and Senator Hawley, so, and Coons and Hirono. Senator Whitehouse. Thank you. First of all, let me uh, thank my colleague, Senator Graham, for his leadership here, and thank Senator Grassley and Senator Blackburn and Senator Hawley and Senator Kennedy for their co-sponsorship of it on uh, the other side, as well as all of our folks. Um, there are three things that are pretty rotten about mandatory arbitration. Its first problem is the Seventh Amendment. In the Constitution, we created a right to jury trial. It's actually a constitutional right. And yet we allow corporations to take that constitutional right away from American citizens without even their knowing that they've given the right up. That, to me, makes no sense at all. The Seventh Amendment was a big deal. The Founding Fathers had a real row 
when the Constitution didn't protect jury trial and the Seventh Amendment had to be added. It was in the Declaration of Independence that royal interference with jury trials was casus belli for the revolution. So if you're an originalist, read the Seventh Amendment, you're going to be for making sure American citizens protect this right. Second, this stuff is very often crooked. In fact, it's so crooked that Senator Klobuchar's attorney general years ago, when I was attorney general, led the attorneys general of the United States to shut down something called the National Arbitration Forum, where arbitrations were taking place that were fraudulent. And it was set down for being deceptive because it deceived the people participating in the arbitration to believe they had a shot when, in fact, the big company always won. It was a crooked operation. And it hasn't gotten much better. I've got to say, the numbers are still appalling in terms of how often consumers win and how, often, how much consumers win. And the last thing is this problem of secrecy, which is a real problem because what a company can do that is misbehaving or that has a predator on its payroll is move the complaint about its predator or about its behavior into secret arbitration. If people had their jury trial rights and this was tried in a courtroom, you'd know right away what was going on and you'd put a stop to it. We have seen misconduct continue and persist because of the secrecy provisions. It's not just mandatory forced arbitration, it's mandatory forced secret arbitration. This has to stop. I'm glad we're starting here, and I thank my colleagues. Senator Hawley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to say a brief word in support and also about the importance of this legislation. I think the Chairman referenced a letter by Attorneys General, 50, all 50 Attorneys General, several years ago. I was one of those Attorneys General, and I was the Attorney General of Missouri. And I said at the time, and I want to reiterate now, that those who face sexual assault or harassment, whether that's in the workplace or somewhere else, should not be barred from speaking about their experiences publicly, and they shouldn't be barred from having their claims heard in court rather than sidetracked into closed-door arbitration, in much the way that Senator Whitehouse was just describing. I think part of the problem that we've seen and that I saw certainly as Attorney General is that these forced arbitration clauses, forced survival, into arcane procedures that don't allow them to confront an open court uh, their assailants and have their claims weighed by a jury of their peers. And because the arbitration is private, by definition almost always, employers have used that to keep people in the dark users to retain their authority for years on end. So I think that this is an important step, an important measure, uh, one that I was proud to call for several years ago and, and proud to co-sponsor today. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Senator Hawley. Uh, I have on my list here, and tell me if I missed you, uh, Blumenthal, then Kennedy, then Coons. Were there others seeking recognition to speak on this bill? Hirono. Klobuchar. Let's uh, go to Senator Blumenthal. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I want to thank all of my colleagues. We obviously have very strong bipartisan support for this bill, including one of the leaders who is not here today, Senator Gillibrand. She has been a longtime champion of this cause. Uh, as my friend and colleague, Senator Graham, has said, this measure is long overdue, uh, but it is simply one example of the kinds of unfairness and injustice that results from forced arbitration. Uh, these uh, measures uh, for arbitration are frequently secret, as Senator Whitehouse has said. They are tucked into the fine print of agreements, so they affect people in nursing homes, people with cable and cell phone contracts, workers who have no choice but to sign agreements in, in the fine print. Uh, and that's the reason that I've offered, with 39 co-sponsors, a measure called the FAIR Act, Forced Arbitration Injustice Repeal Act, uh, it's pretty simple. It would do for other contracts what we're trying to do here for the survivors of sexual assault and harassment, uh, essentially provide these consumers and workers with their day in court, uh, unlock the courthouse doors to these kinds of plaintiffs and others who are seeking simple justice. Uh, so I'm hoping that 
the overwhelming support for this measure will open the possibility of legislation that would eliminate forced arbitration in other areas as well. I just want to finish by expressing my appreciation to the real heroes here, uh, the survivors of sexual assault who've come forward with their stories, uh, many of them in situations where they braved the stigma and potential revenge in the workplaces that would result from their coming forward. Gretchen Carlson has been the face and voice of many of them. She's had the courage to express on their behalf the kind of unfairness that they suffer so often and so consistently when they do express these kinds of grievances, well justified and often sabotaged by the corporations that have power over them. So I am very glad we're going to move forward today with this measure. I hope it will lead to additional reforms that reduce the injustices resulting from forced arbitration. Thanks, Thank Senator Blumenthal. Senator Kennedy. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think uh, I think most fair-minded Americans can agree that this is no country for creepy old men or women. Um, I thought Senator Graham made a, a very salient point when he talked about the importance of due process. Just because you're accused of something doesn't mean you did it. I believe, as I think we all do, that the accused and the accuser are entitled to due process. I don't see this legislation as inconsistent with due process. Uh, I think it uh, will afford more due process. I also believe in the sanctity of contracts. I don't believe in the sanctity of contracts of adhesion. Both sides have to agree intentionally to a contract. And uh, that's why I'm, I am uh, proud to co-sponsor and vote for this bill. Thank you, Senator Kennedy. The senators uh, remaining are Coons, Klobuchar, and Hirono. Senator Coons. Thank you, Chairman Durbin, for a chance to speak briefly to this. And thank you, um, Senator Graham, uh, for your leadership on this, and to Senator Gillibrand, uh, Senator Blumenthal, for long being an advocate for consumer protection, and for your leadership on the FAIR Act, and the recognition that if this has brought all 50 attorneys general together, if this has brought a moment of bipartisanship here, uh, we should listen uh, to the ways in which forced arbitration is so often the result of terms and conditions that we all agree to without really reading them or understanding them and can often have embedded provisions like com compulsory arbitration uh, that then prevent uh, victims of abuse uh, from having their day in court. Uh, Gretchen Carlson uh, was joined by a friend of mine, State Senator uh, Sarah McBride uh, from Delaware, a friend and longtime neighbor, um, who is also one of the many victims who sent a letter, hundreds of victims sent letters to us on this uh, committee. I'm pleased to see that this is leading us to act, and I am hopeful, Mr. Chairman, that this will see action on the Senate floor soon. Thank you. Thanks very much. Senator Klobuchar, then Senator Hirono. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, I wanted to particularly welcome um, Gretchen because uh, she grew up in Minnesota and Coon Rapids, Minnesota. That's where she learned to play violin. Um, and we've always been very proud of her and couldn't be more proud of her uh, leadership um, on this incredibly important issue. The, um, I, I think back uh, to how things were and how things can be. And we all know there have been changes, including in the Senate, uh, where Senator Blunt and I worked together um, uh, with uh, Leader McConnell, Leader Schumer, on changing our own laws in the Senate and making sure that we have a workplace to, that makes very clear that sexual harassment, sexual assault will not be tolerated. Um, we had a broken and outdated process in this very building uh, that we have greatly changed. Um, and I hope that it will lead to great improvement. 
Uh, but this is on a much larger scale because it basically um, takes this issue out from behind um, boardrooms, out from behind closed doors, and makes it very clear uh, that people have a right uh, to speak out and make their claims. And I want to thank um, Senator Graham and all of our colleagues uh, that have worked on this, um, and especially thank Senator Gillibrand, who is her usual tenacious self, um, and Senator uh, Blumenthal and all. I also wanted to note, uh, for the record, the number of national groups that have long advocated for this, which includes the Jewish Women International, National Alliance to End Sexual Violence, National Center on Domestic and Sexual Violence, National Coalition Against Domestic Violence, RAIN, uh, Sexual Violence Prevention Association, and just so many groups and friends that have um, made this day happen. So thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Senator Klobuchar. Senator Hirono. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I'd also like to uh, thank Senator Gillibrand and uh, Senator Blumenthal on this committee, um, Senator Graham. This is uh, truly a very important bipartisan bill for, uh, for acts that have long gone uh, unpunished or the perpetrators being held responsible. So forced arbitration clauses in employment contracts, in membership contracts, in many consumer contracts are already very, very one-sided, totally unfair to the claimant. And of course, what this bill does is to restore or to provide uh, substantive uh, and procedural due process to the claimants. And in forced arbitration cases, Generally, it is the corporation that gets to pick the arbitrators or the um, chair of the arbitration. Uh, there is every incentive for that arbitrator to want to continue to be employed by the corporation that picks him or her. And so there is definitely a tendency to side with the corporation in these cases. These are already very, very difficult cases to prove, and we make it even tougher when uh, all of the referees are picked by the corporation. It is a pastime for us to move on this bill. So of course I encourage all of my uh, committee members to vote aye on this bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Rono. If no one else seeks recognition. Mr. Chairman. Senator Feinstein. I would just ask that a statement be placed in the record. Without objection, it will. Thank you. On favorably reporting S2342 as amended, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The majority of the members present having voted in the affirmative, the ayes have it. The bill will be favorably reported to the floor. Mr. Uh, Chairman, I'm sorry, may I be um, included as a co-sponsor? Senator Verona will be included as a co-sponsor, and I just say one word to the members of the committee on both sides. This is the Senate Judiciary Committee at its best, a bipartisan effort on an issue of importance to the cause of justice in our nation. That's why we're here. This is all I have, and the meeting stands adjourned.